In this fifth podcast, I want to recap on uh, our measurements of density for solids, liquids and gases and move forwards and look at how this information helps us to understand how particles are arranged in solids, liquids and gases in the three common states of matter. So we measured the density of, of solids initially and to do that we used a balance to measure the mass of the solid. Here's an example of a solid. It's a solid cube sitting on the balance so we were able to record the object's mass. And by measuring the dimensions of the, the object we were able to work out the volume length by width by height so we had the volume and from this information we calculated the density density is mass divided by volume so that's straightforward for the regular shaped solid for the block and it's also fairly straightforward for the liquid. The mass is measured in a similar way. This time we have to measure the mass of the empty container first so we can subtract it from the mass of the container with the liquid. Volume, we need to use a glass or a, a vessel which has a scale so we can measure the volume of the liquid but the calculation still remains the same. Uh, density is mass divided by volume. Now for a gas, we had a little more difficulty, but we still used a container, similar to this one here. In this case, we also needed a, an extra piece of equipment, a vacuum pump. So we measured the container full of gas, air in this case, and then we used the vacuum pump to suck the air out of the container. So we suck the air out air out and then we measure the mass afterwards and again the difference in mass gives us the mass of the air that was inside the container. The container we used had a known volume uh, it was written on it 1000 milliliters and a milliliter is exactly the same as a centimeter cubed so again we were able to work out the density of the gas. As a reminder, these are some of the density values that we actually measured in class. Aluminium was around about 2.5 grams per centimeter cubed. Oak was around about 0.69 grams per centimeter cubed. Acrylic, a type of plastic, 0.85 grams per centimeter cubed. Water, exactly 1 gram per centimeter cubed. Ethanol, a little less at 0.82 grams per centimeter cubed and air 0.0012 grams per centimeter cubed. Now this last one, it seems like a bit of an odd one out. Look at all the other values. We've got values in the order of one, just less than one, just more than one. Not a great deal of difference. Whether liquid or solid, the numbers are fairly similar. But this one here, this one here, very different. This one here is much lower than the other ones. Much lower. Let me highlight that. Much lower. A thousand times smaller than this one. A thousand times smaller. The density is a thousand times less. This fact tells us a lot about how the particles are arranged in solids, liquids and gases. And we're going to move on and have a look at that right now. So we know that all matter is made of particles. And let's take a look firstly at this piece of matter. So in this piece of matter here, we have a, uh, we have a sort of a rectangular space. And within that rectangular space, we can see these orange circles, which represent the particles of matter. And we can see a few things. We can see that they're very close together we can see that they're arranged in a very clear pattern and 
we can imagine that they're, they're strongly attached to one another. Now this is a solid. So in a solid, the particles are in a regular pattern. They're very tightly packed together, and uh, they're strongly bonded together as well. Let's take a look at another example. In this piece of matter, we can see that the arrangement of the particles is a little bit different. One thing we can note, though, and if we counted them, we would find out for sure, there are the same number of particles in this space as in the first space. Now that tells us that the particles are about the same distance apart. The particles aren't any further apart or any closer, but the pattern's gone. They're all jumbled up. They're jumbled up. Now that suggests that they're not so strongly bonded to one another. But it's important to note that there's really not that much more space between them. This would be a liquid. Now because the particles haven't spread out that much, the density of solids and liquids are going to be similar. The density of, let's say, solid aluminium and liquid aluminium, it's not very different. The density of solid water or ice and liquid water, it's not hugely different. In fact, liquid water is more dense than solid water or ice for other reasons. Now let's look at a a third box of matter. Now in this box we can see that the particles have spread out a great deal. They've spread out hugely, so much so that there are only a few particles left in this fixed volume. The particles aren't very close to each other. It's suggesting to us they're not very strongly attracted to each other. They're not bonded to each other. Now, this would be a gas. Because we have far fewer particles in this fixed volume, we can see that the density is clearly a lot lower, as we sh showed from our experiment. So the density of gas is a lot lower because the particles have spread out uh, to, to, um, so that they have a lot more space between them. So how much further apart are gas particles than liquid and solid particles? Well, we know that gases or at least air, is around a thousand times less dense than water. So we can hopefully use this piece of information to estimate how much further the particles are apart. So let's imagine a, uh, an object. Here we have a cube. And let's imagine this object was made of uh, particles. Here's a particle one of our particles, and let's imagine it was made from uh, solid. Now we know that solid particles or solid materials, uh, the, mati the particles are very close together, and here we have a row of these particles, 10 actually, 10 particles, and this solid made up of lots and lots of these particles. Now I'm not going to do all of this but we can see that we're going to have a lot of particles in this box. Now you might be able to see how many particles we're going to have in this box. Hmm, can you see? So this box has 10 particles along this bottom edge. How many particles is it going to have along the side edge? Why don't you pause the podcast, find an answer, and then start it again. See if you're right. And yes, you were right, 10. 10 by 10. Now, this is a cube, so I can actually fit 
10 layers of 10 all the way back here. So I've quickly added 10 layers. So I've got 10, oops, it's not right in highlighter. I've got 10 particles by 10 particles by 10 particles. So we can hopefully see that in this box right now we have a thousand particles. So remember this represents a solid or a liquid, a thousand particles in this space. Now we know a gas is a thousand times less dense. So in, a, in the same amount of space it must have a thousand times fewer particles. So it would only have one particle. There's my one particle. Let's take these other particles away. So I'm going to take my one particle in there. That's my gas. Now I only have one particle, one particle of gas. Now if I imagine the position of the, the next particle of gas, where is it going to be? Now in order to visualize that, I'm going to actually drag this box across here. I'm going to add myself another box, put that in here. So that's the next box. And here's my gas particle. Maybe it's in the middle of that box. I'm going to get myself another gas particle for the next one. And there we are. How far apart are those two gas particles? Compared to the solid particles, those two gas particles are 10 times further apart. 10 times further apart. I can confirm that by just bringing those particles down and we can see they are indeed 10 times further apart than in the, in the solid. So we can conclude that because from experimentation Gases are a thousand times or roughly a thousand, thousand times less dense than solids and liquids. We can conclude that the particles must be approximately ten times further apart in gases than they are in solids and liquids.